I love these plush toys that the people make. The fans have made some great toys. It's really good stuff. Wow, and here is our... Here's Bilbo. Really cool. Good stuff. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. This should be quite interesting. <laughs> Are we ready to go live? I think we're live already. Have I powdered my nose? Powdered my face? You look wonderful, Cliff. Makeup! And that's when HR Puff and Stuff would arrive on the side uh, with a giant, giant makeup puff and smack you and your whole body's covered in powder. Remember that? Remember the kids' show, HR Puff and Stuff, from the 60s? Scoot over. It was so funny. Scoot over. Oh. I thought I thought you were coming out. You go in. You go in. I'll go in. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, hi everybody. I'm about to post a really fun picture of uh, William Kircher. Also known as Bill. 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 How about that? That the picture we just posted on our Facebook timeline, you guys check out and click like if you haven't. Go to the OneRing.net on Facebook and click like on our page. And there you'll see a great Billy meeting face to face with another, a, another a great. Bigger, with a bigger Bill. Another great Bill. A Bill and a Billy who've met for the first time. Thunder from the heavens, an angelic chorus. And there they were, Billy Boyd Pippin standing right next to Biffer as played by Mr. William Kircher. Um, so cool. Such a fun thing. And so I, we, we, thought, we thought we'd open uh, this show a little early today because ooh. there's so much going on. You're hosting a special thing indeed. tonight. I am indeed. In, in Santa Clarita, which is right near right near where Paul Walker uh, had his unfortunate accident. It's indeed, just, that is uh, true. Uh, just down the street. Really is right down and, from that location, and, yes. And you know, we, Strangely enough. And Paul Walker, I mean, he's just been a temple of the franchise of the Fast and the Furious. He's been in several of the movies, but Fast and the Furious was his baby. And uh, he shared the screen with Bard the Bowman himself, Luke Evans. And so... It's all connected? Yeah, so Luke Evans wow, it is all connected. at the premiere on the black carpet yesterday... And, you know, the energy was just so good and so positive. Uh, you know, on our list of questions was, you know, to, for, for, to ask Luke, you know, what was it like working with Paul Walker uh, because of the, his big accident, uh, uh, tragic accident this, this week. And, um, you know, we couldn't bring ourselves to do it because the, the energy was so jovial. And sure enough, a few, few minutes later, mm -hmm. uh, after Luke Evans, Martin Freeman walked up. And as, as the Happy Hobbits were talking to him, Benedict Cumberbatch comes and goes, bloop, <laughs> and does a little, little birdie. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a funny, he got goosed, as they say. Yeah, you know, the Happy Hobbits, uh, Keely and Feely, were having a wonderful time on the red carpet, doing uh, interviews with cast, um, had a wonderful chat with Philippa Boyens, among many other luminaries who are involved with this uh, creative project. And it was so funny, that little clip you got, Martin Freeman was in the middle of a sentence, and right behind him, Smaug walks up and goes, tweak and just pinches him on the bottom and then what was that and blink and he was gone blink, so blink gone. And funny that, and that's how so it is. funny you do a lot of waiting uh you, you, at the at these premieres and you wait for for people to show up and then as soon as they show up they all show up at once and suddenly it's like boom 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 and and then the movie has to start on time otherwise everyone's going to be there until midnight so so you know, we we were privileged enough to get uh, get Dean and Aiden and Martin, mm -hmm. and Philippa and and uh, a bunch of other people. But uh, you know, our friends uh, uh, Evangeline Lilly, she was beating Russ away. Literally, she was being pulled by her arm, and uh, uh, and she st said, "Stop! Those are the Happy Hobbits." <laughs> she did. That was so great. So. For you guys who were watching uh, the live stream, Eru Vandy in the chat room says she uh, saw that happen live. You did? Oh yeah! Uh, and and then hello to everybody just joining us again. Hello, uh, welcome. W welcome to Torn Tuesday. So we're we're just recapping uh, uh, some of the cool stuff that happened uh, tonight and this week uh, around the Hobbit premiere. We're not supposed to talk about it that much uh, until next can't, Sunday. I can't talk about it at all except for the fact that I'm really agitated at having to be silent. You know how hard it is yeah. to, to have so much you want to say. I just want to tell Out everybody. loud, I want to just shout to the heavens all the stuff that I, I know. You know, or maybe, maybe, <laughs> I, maybe, maybe I should rephrase it like this. I just can't wait to tell everybody about this movie. And you know how I feel about the first one. Yes, I do. I know, um... So, 
Uh, but next Tuesday I we'll be it. able to go full board because next Sunday the embargo is lifted and it we is. open our book of West March and oh, nice reference there, Justin. Uh, very there. good, very good. I see what you did there. <laughs> I watched the torrent stream till 11 p.m. So yeah, what what was the birthday present the girls gave Aiden and Dean? Won't you like to know? We're gonna let the Happy Hobbits uh, edit their little video together. And, uh, and they've got a wonderful surprise. You know, it was so wonderful. Uh, we had the opportunity. Of, like, there was so much going on yesterday that uh, so half the team split up. We, we split up like the fellowship. Mm -hmm. So half the team went to LAX and met Peter Jackson on the tarmac. With oh, the how, how cool from, was from that? From our friends at Air New Zealand. And the other half of the team went over to Burbank, Warner Brothers, Water Tower Music, got a preview of of the, the the new soundtrack the new soundtrack and Ooh, do we do we have it here do we have it here to no, show no we don't have it we here don't have, we don't have the, that. They, they, we, they said don't take only only touch oh we don't have it yeah. oh sorry but we got so, to videotape it but we don't have it with us so we're gonna have a preview of that <laughs> later this week it was like, we're gonna yeah. have a huge preview of someone that. pulled out a ruler and went smack right? yeah. is that what happens yeah so um so we we were able to talk so to almost everybody and you know the funny thing is yesterday mm. We're, we're, we're standing, it was 5 o'clock in the evening, the sun is setting, the Hollywood Boulevard, the crowds are gathering, the press is going like restless, like please let us in and do our job. Mm -hmm. And who do we see just randomly walking down the Hollywood Boulevard, just by himself, just kind of scoping out the things. Nobody recognizes him, nobody knows who he is. He's just kind of, he just looks like a, a well-dressed tourist. I said, Bill? Bill Kircher? It was William Kircher. You did? And he was happened to just be walking away. He's like, Justin! He remembered me from, from Dragon Con. From Dragon Con, yes. And I said, Alex and Kelly. He's like, you're the girls. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and so what a wonderful, wonderful, like, first introduction to William Kircher. We said, Bill, you got to come on the show. He's like, I don't know. If I, I, I might be a little hungover at the <laughs> Hobbit party. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, for sure. So, uh, but we said, look, it doesn't matter because because we're just chatting with you, the fans. Yeah, it's just it was very casual. We so so we, so, so Billy so Billy we, Billy Boyd helped convince him. Yes. So last okay, we, night we, we, we Billy said, was like, "You have to do their live show," and that was William so was like, wonderful. "Okay, I'll come along and, and you do know it." Who else was there? Sean. And Sean vouched for the show. Sean Astin yeah, was, yeah, there he was there with his daughter. The, yeah. the Happy Hobbits got an exclusive interview with, with li the little baby from the end of Return of the King. He's now all grown up. Is now all She's grown up. all grown up. And talking to the Happy Hobbits and fangirling out so much. I almost forgot to join tour tonight. Yeah, this is a special uh, early episode. Thank you, Legolas. <laughs> if you're just if you're watching on YouTube after the fact, this is tour in two sets. We're usually at five p.m. Pacific, but this is a, a special post premiere, special episode. early edition. Yes, um, indeed. We're gonna uh, we're gonna put to, when when uh, uh, Bill gets here, we're gonna put the questions to you, the fans, because he enjoy talking with you fans at dragon con this year he had such many good stories to tell and he's the only one that speaks dwarven black speech so or the ancient dwarven speech so okay he wants us to come down now so he can get entrance to the back we're gonna we're leave here. justin here for just a minute ladies behave yourselves with this young man and i trust the show in his capable hands and i'm gonna run downstairs and i'm gonna find myself a dwarf the one with the axe in his forehead i'll be right back be right back. Cliff is going to get William Kircher. So hello everybody, Stargate Geek, Gwethelene, Ano. We've got some amazing videos that we'll be working on all week. We're coming up to next week. Uh, we've got footage that we have to edit together from the premiere. Uh, we've got a preview of the uh, special edition soundtrack, which you, you, you're you going to want to get. comes out next Tuesday. It's amazing. There's some stuff in there. Like it's interactive. It's an interactive soundtrack. Wait till you wait till you see. We got the we got the whole preview. Uh, we got a preview of Air New Zealand. Uh, Alex actually went. Ha Alex from the Happy Hobbit. Feely from the Happy Hobbits went to the terminal. Was on the tarmac, and Feely himself, Dino Gorman, comes up and says, "You're you're you're the girl. You're Happy Hobbit." So Feely, the actual Feely, started freaking out before our Feely knew what was going on it's amazing wait till you see happy hobbits have so much so much wonderful stories footage i'm sure they'll be putting it all together 
uh, over this week. I'm going to be working overtime. You saw you saw the clip that I posted last night at 1.30 a.m. of Benedict and Martin. Um, 50,000 views already is crazy. So uh, we've got uh, just so much. Again, we can't talk much about the movie and everything else until next Sunday. But we, what we can do in the meantime is just kind of give you some bits and boops of uh, of people. But we have some amazing, we met a lot of fans, cosplay fans that were camped out for two days. They got autographs from Benedict, Fran, Philippa. We got wonderful footage, interview with these wonderful 13 year old girls that were just crying because they met Philippa and Fran and they said, follow your dreams, girls. Like it was, they, I said, but what about, what about Martin and, 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 and Smaug? They, they, like you met all these people, it's like, it doesn't matter. Philippa and Fran, they're, they're our idols, you know, they're women working in, in entertainment, they're writing movies, like, we want to be them. It was, I, I, I still, my heart, you know, it was just, it was a magic moment, uh, it, it, it was a magic day, um, and we hope you enjoyed uh, the coverage. Uh, that we, we we were there uh it was kind of kind of wonky and awkward we could, uh, we tried to get more crew in but it was just me and the happy hobbit so i had to do double duty and hold two cameras and three a third camera behind me and i had three mics and it was uh it, 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 it was a lot of work so but you know we do it all for you so i hear i hear biffer downstairs i hear the black speech and suddenly my hair goes on in like some great ancient evil has walked in the door um but i think bill can explain to you more about what that ancient evils the you, fangirl screaming sounded like banshee screams you're you're right uh you know i i know i could have done better thank you sheer say but i know i could have done better i was trying to get the ipad streaming just right so the angle was right so we weren't like looking at cleavage mm -hmm. the whole time so uh hey we just got a text hey justin cliff just want to see if you got my email uh cliff uh, yeah we're we uh, my e inbox from yesterday ha is like 102 messages uh cliff is checking his email more often than me um, but if you're just joining us, Torn Tuesdays is live right now with uh, someone that's walking in. You hey! Can, someone's here. I'm going to get up right now and Cliff What's can talk. What's up? What is this place? This is, this is like a, Excuse me? <laughs> this is like a time warp. <laughs> it is. Well, there's a TARDIS in here. So. Oh, yeah. Where do I sit? Well, right here on the inside, if you'd like. That's here? much more comfortable. This, yeah. is the, this is the pole position. This indeed is it. Do you want to hey bring guys. that? Hey guys! Hello, hello everybody. How's it all going? This is our live chat here, where we have instant questions and interaction with everybody who's that, watching us live. That's fantastic. I'm just going to turn my phone off because I'm going to be polite, <laughs> unless anybody wants to text me. That's fun. And they, okay. And they can text Cliff at uh, five three zero six. They can text Cliff, and we will answer. F it is five three zero six four Frodo. In case you guys want to know, the Torn hotline is available. If you want to chat, send a question, you can actually interact with us in the chat room right here. Everyone says, hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Welcome. Hello, William. Look at all this. Hello, guys. This is hello, great. Portugal. There's Erevandi. There's Jeffrey Lindsay. You guys are from all around the world, are you not? Give us a shout out while you're in the chat and let us know where in the world you are coming from for our live show. Oh, that would be fantastic. This is very exciting, I have to say. Clifford, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. I want to Nicole, say thank come you. and say hello over here. Nicole Kircher. The very Nicole the, is going to come and say hi. The very lovely Nicole Kircher. Yep, she's, you she's you guys looking, are so stylish here in Los looking, Angeles today. Ah, uh, well, it is. Hello, LA. dear. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm now videoing you guys, <laughs> videoing us. <laughs> it's like an inception mirror, a video of and a video. And can I just say that this is extremely cozy and I feel like we're in a very intimate space here. I hope we're not invading. Stargate geek Emily met you at London Comic Con. Hiya, Emily. She wants to say hi. Hello from Spain, William. Hi. Oh, everyone says Biffo. Hey. Oh, from Oregon, from England. Yay. Yeah. From France. Yeah. Everyone around the world is live at our show right Coast here. Coast Bell Cool. <laughs> Peace, everybody. <laughs> I'll let you continue. Oh, that's hysterical. Now Thanks, people Nicole. Know, people know what that means. It means um, Mighty Dwarf. Mighty Dwarf. Yes. I've actually got a, a number plate. I've got it on a number plate at home. I've got the number plate Biffa. Mm-hmm.
which I haven't put on a car yet because I don't want to be too obvious about it all. And I've got Kurs Belkur, Mighty Dwarf. Oh, that is so cool. Germany, Munich, Felton, California. Hello, California. Hello, Germany. South America, Cornwall, UK. Wow, this is incredible. They could Skype you in if, and I feel like, um, Skype. if somebody comes in via Skype. We'll have this turned right, on. Look, I'm, yeah, I'm honored, honored to be here. So um, this is a ball. Let's go. Okay. Can we, can we go? Can, can we, we start? Where's the refreshments? Yeah, uh, where are the refreshments? <laughs> let's let's take. <laughs> Take a quick look here at a secret Twitter message we got from dialect coach Leith McPherson. Leith! I was just talking to her over the past couple of days, and she, I said, any special messages yeah. for Mr. Kircher? And she said, ha, 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 you could tell him I think he's a coosed bel cool. <laughs> He'll know what that means. And I just said and that. And you just said that. That's the connection. Leith was fantastic, guys, because yes. Leith was our dialect coach, and you mm -hmm. always they're always on... Um, they're always there with you in the studio mm. and when you're on location. Dialect Coach is always there. But for the Dwarvish, which we spent a long time working with Leaf, l learning the Dwarvish, she will come up and correct you. So even though it's an imag <laughs> even though that l the language of Kuzdul is made up for, you know, by a, um, um, a language phonetics expert, she it's is. a made up language and yet they still come up and make you do it right. So, and that was Leaf's job. She was fabulous too. We were talking with She's her. She's practically perfect in every way, and Leith will know what that means. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you I, can actually go back to her and I, say that's that. funny. Liam says you're practically perfect in every way. Uh, that's hysterical. I think <laughs> I know. Is that a Mary Poppins reference? It is because I used to call Leith Mary Poppins. <laughs> 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 because she it. spoke of it like Mary, she holds herself like Mary Poppins. And really? She, yeah. Well, the joy the joy of seeing her do her work was only evident to the fans when they got the extended edition, and then we could see her work with you behind the scenes. And she okay. said that she's very desperate to see that footage she has not yeah, seen. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Really? Yeah, yeah. I okay. Seen, I haven't seen the extended version, but I am happy to know that. Um, that Biffa's made it some, there's some more of Biffa in that extended version. And yes. the line, Kool's de Belcour, which I say to, to Martin, uh, apparently is in the um, extended version of the film. And I just saw the premiere last night, and it was insane. Your, in first, time, your first time seeing first the whole time film? Seeing it. Really? Absolutely incredible. I would have thought before the media events that the, uh, the cast and crew would have gotten together for a cast yeah. screening. No, because, no, well, the cast and crew screening, because this is the, was the first in the world was last night. Where I'm uh, going back to New Zealand and we're doing a cast and crew screening on what date, Nicole? The 12th? Ooh. The 13th? 9th. The 9th. The 9th. The 9th. Wow, that's yeah. right. So that's when I get to see the cast and crew screening even though I have actually seen the film now. Wow. And wow, you guys are going to be <laughs> amazed because it is, in every sense of the word, spectacular. Incredible. Were you impressed as I was? Oh, I just, just wiped away. I couldn't believe mm -hmm. it. You know, I'm not allowed to movie. talk. As a reporter, I'm, I have to wait until December 8th. Yeah, I'm not going to do any spoilers. I'm not going to say who dies. Nobody dies. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, well, I'm not going to say where it ends. I'm not going to say anything about it. But we, guys, see it. It's incredible. We can talk about your experiences filming. We can talk about the issues in the barrels. Now, Justin said you told a great story at Dragon Con. Okay, which about, one? Oh, about about uh, <laughs> the costume becoming so waterlogged. Oh, that's right. It was. Um, uh, oh no, that story. That was because that was um, to do with the weight of the costumes. Because what would happen is, uh, we did one particular day where we had to. We were working in the rain. It was in the studio, but they had huge rain machines pouring down on us. And then they, the uh, costume people would say, we'd put put all, all our gear on the bags and the mm. and the our cloaks, and the costume people would say, we're going to wet you down a little bit. And you, a yeah, all right, bit. a little bit, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then they pour buckets of water all over us, which is crazy. And then we worked in that rain for about two hours shooting the scene, which is up the side of a cliff. Um, it's where we fight the stone giants. Well, no, they fight us, they mm -hmm. throw stuff at us. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the stone giant scene. So we're running up the uh, thing, getting wetter and wetter. And then they put take us out and they put the stunt guys to do the same in the same. Um, not the same costume, stunt guys have their own costume, but the same cloaks and the same bags. So the stunt guys spent four hours working on that scene, getting completely soaked. Then they change out the stunt guys and put us back in the gear. And by that time, the gear was so waterlogged and heavy, you could barely stand up. You really, it was really a kind of a thing of like, <laughs> oh, 
It's like you carrying, standing like that, like carrying was, 150 pounds oh, of extra no, it weight. It was like um, 50 kilo oh, extra. Wow. Okay, now, wow. And so, but then Peter Jackson, because he loves us, Peter, with his, <laughs> his um, you know, cheeky grin, says, "Okay, now I want you to run up the side of that cliff." <laughs> the thing is, okay, it's still a cliff. It's in the studio, but it's still a cliff. You can barely walk. He wanted you to you can run. You barely stand. And you have to run. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and boy, you run. That's because amazing. Because Peter Jackson you. No, it was an incredible thing. Well, the we, barrels was wild. We okay, saw, there's got to be some questions. Uh, uh, it says turn them into giant sponges. They did. They did. We did. We did. We, did. we were giant sponges. No, that was a day. Was the what, that was the heaviest costume kind of day, and uh, we all experienced that. We all went through it. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about this whole job is that. Um, what you see in the film is we really went through so much of that stuff for real. Yeah. You know, and okay, we've got a fantastic stunt team, but actually the actors do it all as well. Can you tell them about Peter Jackson and Robert Walker? And because, ah. thank you, Nicole, because, well, this is a fantastic story, because we would actually, um, every now and then, complain, actors never complain, ha, 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 about the weight, <laughs> of, about the weight of our costumes, you know, um, one day Peter Jackson came along, Oh, we've got a text here. Oh, Peter yeah. Jackson came along to the set and he was wearing a complete World War One infantryman rifleman costume from oh. World War One. Really? Hi Emily. It's great seeing you on Torn Tuesdays. Thank, Thank you, Emily. Can I'll just finish the story, hunt. Just hold that thought. Don't go away. Hold that thought, Emily. Hold, hold that on thought, one Emily. second. I just We're, have to finish the story. He's finishing the story. Hold so on. anyway, Peter turns up in the ski. He's got a tin hat, the full khaki outfit, the pack, the rifle everything dressed completely as a world war one soldier and then he got us to hold and carry the, the way the stuff weighed 90 pounds so he was in his kind of fun oh. way trying to say to us now these guys had to go and fight a war <laughs> Oh, oh, we are. We're just actors. <laughs> These young chaps had to go and fight a war carrying this gear. So anyway, that was a funny, funny experience. That's cool. So he, he actually, you know, pulled out this authentic stuff and proved that it can be done. Well, and also <laughs> proved to, to say that, you know, actually, <laughs> ah, the refreshments have arrived. Oh, Thank you. lovely. Thank you, my good man. Very good. Good. Cheers. Yes, yeah, cheers. Here, Nectar of the Gods. Yeah. Crystal Springs keys, water. Don't you? Do you have the car keys? I do. Okay. Ah, Thank okay. You. Very Don't good. Joy Don't bend yes. the convertible. Yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> See you in a couple of days. So some of these, Emily. We have to say hello to Emily. Emily, you look. Hi. I remember you, sweetheart. You look great. Yeah. Are you skyping? Are you? It's great seeing you, at London Film and Comic Con. Thanks, and I'm sure loads of people are really grateful that you're coming to conventions and things. I actually, you know, well, you saw me there, Emily. I really like meeting the people. I really like meeting the fans. It is a lot of fun being able to. One thing, oh, look, I'll tell you an interesting thing because I d now have been to Salt Lake and to Atlanta, and I've done a couple of New Zealand. But I did London, and Germany, and Sweden. And an incredible thing of, of going around the world and meeting so many different people is you learn that people are lovely. You know, there's all these differences in the world of people that, you know, and fighting. Stop laughing, Nicole. But I'm serious. Actually, people are really, really nice. And that mm -hmm. is, it's an experience of traveling around and meeting nice people. I mean, God, it beats working for a living. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. just lovely, Emily. And it was lovely meeting you, hun. There yeah, she is. There. I've, I've done There's I've Emily. Done Yes, <laughs> keep going. Sci-fi fantasy fans and some of the actors and things, I think, are some of the best people I've met. And I think you were awesome. And Thank you, darling. And I really can't wait to see more of you and the others. So well, I'm really hoping, you know. Of smog. I don't know what's happening um, next year yet, but I'm definitely planning to get out there, and I'd love to see you guys all again. So, you know, if I, if, you know, come and see me where I'm, when I'm around, say hi. Okay. Yeah, um, Showmaster show is one of the biggest. It is, it is. Write to Jason, tell him, get, get William and, back. Um, um, Collectomania, yeah. they do yeah. as well. Oh, no, in, right. I've seen the announcements for RingCon, yeah. um, the HobbitCon. Yeah, RingCon um, in Germany is yeah. next. Well, he hasn't asked me for HobbitCon yet, so oh. fingers crossed. Okay, that, I um, hope so. But I'll either get there or back to RingCon next year, because I, I, RingCon was just... An incredible experience. It was just so much fun. That's very good. Thanks, Emily, for coming in to the show again and, and yeah, joining us. Take care, Emily. Good to see you again. Yeah. 
Very good. We'll Cheers. 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 So, so can Emily see me through here? Yes. Okay. Emily sees us. See oh, very good. That was good. Cheers. Skype happens, and that instantly brings people from around the world right here to this little studio, uh, this unassuming attic. You know, they just finished doing a big art show, yeah. and they do a lot of art galleries and art shows. The last thing they did was a retrospective of Doctor Who. Oh, okay. I which saw is, the Doctor Who stuff around. So many of these extra pieces, some of them are being carefully packed up and shipped back to the right. artists. Okay. And sometimes we take that camera and we spin it around in here just to show all the chaos that's going on oh, in here. Oh, good. So you know what oh, people, yeah. people know what's going people on. People are very way. familiar with so this room. In this, yes. you know, that's cool. Uh, so is, pity Sylvester wasn't there last night because Sylvester McCoy who is a doctor, has been a Doctor Who, but is also Radagast. Lovely person. Oh, he's my favorite. I love Sylvester And I'm going to keep saying that word lovely, Nicole, because people are lovely. <laughs> Very lovely. Now, somebody... You're, lo you're lovely. You're lovely. Thank you. I, I, I took my lovely pills this morning. And they're starting to work now. People have asked at least twice, can you speak in some fluent Kuzduel? That they'd love to hear a little bit of Kuzduel. Yeah. Ah. Wait a minute. I just have to think... Um, Lumafra Dabkar. Oh, what's that? I can't say. Yes, I can. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, 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 I, the, I, video is, the video is gone out, Justin. They need something to be checked or readjusted real quick. Can you hear yeah. us, though? Yeah, they can, can hear. hear. They've been oh, hearing. Well, I'll do some Lumafra Dabkar means time to swing an axe. <laughs> it's a call to action. Time to swing an axe? I know. And this one, this That's really great. I know. Do you know, um, I'm excited when I look and rewatch An Unexpected Journey, and I see glimpses of other dwarves who are with Thorin's company, yeah. and I see them in that flashback scene at the Battle of Azanul Bazaar, yeah. outside the gates of Moria. Yeah. You are also present, are you not? I might be in the background somewhere. I thought I saw you. Can't yes, say, you know, can't I say too much could about that. swear, but that's last year's movie. Of course, you can talk now, about that. You told me about somebody <laughs> that's done a site for Biffa. First, I'd like to say thank yes. you to everybody because so many people love Biffa. You know, Biffa is not. You know, he's the Biffa's the dwarf that they had to bring along on the journey, but they didn't really want to because they couldn't really leave him alone mm -hmm. at home because he couldn't look after himself. So they thought, what the hell are we going to do with Biff? Oh, we'll have to bring him. But he's well, so embarrassing. It's funny. So he's the odd one out. Of all, all the dwarves are odd, but Biff really is the the one that's a little bit different to everybody else. And I think the fans are I think the fans are starting to notice and really appreciate there's a website that I stumbled upon on Tumblr yeah. and the subject is we need to talk about Biffer. We do. Now I want to know now this <laughs> it's is great. Um, this is a girl This is White Eagle. White Eagle and she says, "No, we really need to talk because he's the best dwarf of them all and we don't seem to be appreciating that." And then <laughs> she goes on to say, "First Let's have Mr. William Kircher explain the character to us. As we know, you have said in the press, yeah. the backstory for my character is that once he was a reasonable, okay guy, but unfortunately he's turned into a bit of a maniac. Yes. He's a bit mentally challenged. He's not thick, he's just got mental problems. This is, this is you That's saying exactly this. That's exactly right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, he's totally unstable, and in a fight he just goes insane, especially with the trolls. Yes, we worked on... Well, that's exactly what... Um, Right from the start, we were given the opportunity to uh, help create the journey of our characters through the film. Yes. And that was the very first meeting when they first showed us um, artistic renditions of our characters, the final ones that had been decided on. It was a very first meeting, and Peter Jackson was there, and Philippa, and Fran. Mm -hmm. It was an incredible thing because we had never been introduced to our characters. And they had these big pictures. They're holding up one by one each character. And of course, we're all sitting around, mm -hmm. going, "Whoa, my God!" That was, you know, because the the different images of the dwarves were so incredible. Yes. And then mine came up, and for like a nanosecond, <laughs> I saw the axe in the head, and I thought, "Uh oh." But, but then I thought, then I thought, that's fantastic. And I said right then and there in the meeting, in front of everybody, I said, "Look." If there's 13 of us dwarves, if I'm the one with the axe in my head, I'd just like to say thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you to the designers. Because I knew this yeah, in there, that's that as an actor, that was going to give me a whole lot of things that I could work on to bring to the character. Yeah. And so I went straight home and I started doing research into the kind of what that kind of injury can cause to somebody. Uh -huh. And then I, um, we came up with the idea that um, that's where the idea came from. 
that Biffle would speak in Kuzdul, ancient Kuzdul, actually. The first lines that I say in the film mm -hmm. are in a very ancient form of the language that, yes. that nobody can understand. Except Gandalf. Gandalf that's exactly no, right. No, but Gandalf doesn't Kuzdul even have... Kuzdul is regular, is regular Kuzdul. Regular Kuzdul. Right? But yeah. Gandalf doesn't even have the courtesy to respond to you in your same ancient dwarf. So we have no idea what you said. That's White Eagle. The White Eagle, she's the one that's... The White there. Eagle so says, yeah. Hello, White Eagle, if you're out there, because I absolutely love that. She noticed that Biffer is really sweet, that he starts picking up plates and cleaning up before anybody else starts the bloody song. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. She also noticed that when there's a cheers and a toast with everyone's flagon of mead or ale, you are cheering with... A, celery. A piece of celery. I am. At the moment when everyone's going cheers, you... Your character is because always I decided doing that something I else. Was going to, I was going to try and create some different things about Biffa, and part of the Love things it. was Love this. It. The See, there Biffa, it is. There's you cheering with I the I know, and it's so fantastic you know this, because they actually filmed a whole lot of that, but all you know, it's just the nature of filmmaking, mm -hmm. things get cut. Yes. So I ate celery for about two days, and <laughs> had it dribbling all through the beard, and I just ate so much celery, and unfortunately... <laughs> apparently, <never> made it. <laughs> apparently, Biffa is a vegetarian. Because Biffa, so I decided Biffa was a vegetarian. Really? Um, people that can have that people that can have that injury have a um, uh, can get a thing called foreign language syndrome. It's like a stroke victim thing. They can, ah. So, so that's where the idea came from that I would speak mm -hmm. in a foreign tongue. Mm. Um, uh, the fact that Biffa was uh, zoned out at the start of the journey is very zoned out, doesn't quite know where he is. And when I'm sitting mm -hmm. around the table, some people ask, what's he thinking, what's he doing? Well, there it is. There's well, your actually, face. There's Peter, your face. You're just Peter staring. Jackson told me to stare at a bowl of nuts on the table, so that's what I'm doing <laughs> in that shot. I'm staring at So, Biffa, you stare at the nuts. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sort of thinking in my head, who are these guys and where am I and what exactly is going on here? And then there's your, your communication, which must come from your experience as a toy maker. Isn't your it character is. a it toy is. maker? He, yes, he and is. So and that, once again, is in the extended um, version um, of yeah. the film. Um, Biffa makes this beautiful, beautiful eagle. Right before they go into Gotham Town. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. It's so back in, have you seen the extended version? Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yes. Just, yes. You right we did there. two versions of that scene. We did a version of the scene where Biffa actually is playing with his toy mm -hmm. and zones out and then a crack appears on the floor and we all fall down and then we reshot the scene because it was a, um, it was a very important to show Martin showing doubt. Uh, Bilbo showing doubt about the journey, so the scene kind of got rewritten for for Bilbo to be able to to do that, to to almost leave um, almost leave the journey. So once again, nature of filmmaking. There's but I'm so pleased that Biff is back in there. Now let's see some of these questions. Emily yeah. says, "I wish I could send William Kircher one of my Christmas cards." Well, she can. That's lovely. And uh, another. Uh, question here is how much is Legolas in the movie meaning the new movie we cannot talk about can't that. talk about the new movie we would love to talk about that but There's we quite cannot a lot of talk elves. about that I can say there is quite a lot of elves in the new movie though um, <coughs> but they're bloody fantastic I, yes I, I'm a dwarf I'm not supposed to say that about elves but because what we say about elves is we say ni ikrit fun ni ikrit fun ni ikrit fun Oh, that's great. That means never trust an elf. Never. Oh. oh. He does, eh? I yes. He he fun. I would say that Legolas, uh, being a little bit older and a little, well, in, he's supposed to be younger yeah. in the chronology of this world, but he looks a bit more buff. He's bigger. He looks a little bit older. His jaw is set. And Legolas is running around doing his own stunts, which I saw when I was visiting the location set. Yeah. And you guys were stuck doing a lot of your own things yourself. Oh, we did that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, that's, part of the joy of it is that... Um, Peter really likes um, uh, to have, the thing is about uh, cinema and screen is, uh, is truth. You have to have truth. And so we've talked a lot about the big running scene, scene 88 in the first film that we do a lot of running. Now we really, really did run mm. over most of New Zealand. And it's actually <laughs> when we got the most tired and the most, because the, okay, the characters are supposed to be tired and exhausted. So the actors would get that way, and that's when it really starts to come to life. Because really? Because it really is real. Yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. And that is part of it. For sure. And it's tough. It's really tough. But then again, it, it, there is a payoff. And no matter how tough it is, you still do it because Peter Jackson is asking you to do it. And um, as an actor, you forget about all the pain and the suffering and, uh, well, not the pain, but the weight <laughs> and the heat. When you fell on your butt, and you, that was pain. 
Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's you know. <laughs> how does that's the new movie? Can't talk about that. How does Biffer get on with a Boffer and Bomber at home? How do the brothers function together as a family? Well, I, we don't actually live together because Biffer is actually a cousin. Boffer and Bomber. This is why I say Biffer is um, the odd one out. Biffer is the kind of person that w lives on his own and a very you know he's a, it's, he's almost become a bit of a hermit. And my backstory for the character is that he was involved in an orc raid. And that orc raid was a very, very terrible experience. And um, I'm saying that Biffa lost his family in that raid, and he mm. got the injury, mm -hmm. which means a, a lot. Of this, he finds it hard to remember. But um, he's the cousin. Biffa and uh, Bofa and Bomba are brothers. Biffa is their cousin, so he doesn't live with them. Oh really? Okay, okay, that's right. You well, he, li he lives fairly close. They live in the same kind of vi vicinity because the they're of the same tribe, if you like, but or um, well, the same clan. But they are. Def but he doesn't. Live. There's a shot here where you hand the skull. They look after him though. to Aiden Turner. That's right. <laughs> that's right. This is so very funny. After after f dealing with the trolls, you see that your character just hands an animal skull to Keeley for no reason. Uh, he sort of considers giving Keeley a cup, but he goes for the skull yeah. and then nods encouragingly when Keeley doesn't like it. That's right. Why, why, why are you handing skulls to people? Because he the challenge of Biffa, the challenge, <laughs> and I talk about the differences of Biffa being the yes. one out. The challenge, uh, in fact, Peter would give us all tasks. And the task that Peter would say to me is when you get to see it, mm -hmm. think about things that are different that Biffa would do, that are completely different to what everybody else might do. Yes. And so my challenge, whenever I got to see it, was to look at the environment, look at what we had to do, and mm -hmm. try to come up with ideas um, that um, that Biffa might do in that particular circumstance that adds right. to the film and adds yes. to the background. Yeah. One thing I love about what you're saying there, Clifford, and what yes. White Eagle has, has done, is, and what i found going around the world, is there are people that actually appreciate those tiny little things that you think of on the day yeah. in the background that add in to the the whole of the film and the creative endeavor of the film and so that is one instant where we had that gear and i thought what would biffa do well biffa <laughs> would actually think the skull is something we could use <laughs> God knows why. so i'm handing it to aiden and we had this fun thing on the day of handing it to aiden going hey this will come in really handy, handy. <laughs> you know, we can forget the cup look at this <laughs> And That's the same funny. with the roasting the silver beet. It's not lettuce, by the way, in the in Rivendell. Um, yes. You know, we decide. I asked for the. Um, I asked the the props people, and I said, "Have you got?" I'd already done the celery thing. Yes. Um, we'd already <laughs> shot that, so I said, "Have you got any celery that I could use in the scene?" And uh, they said they came up with this huge head of silver beet because they didn't have oh, any great. celery. So I stuck it on the end of a poker <laughs> and I roasted it over the fire that because Biffa, funny. that's Biff as a vegetarian. Yes. And the other thing that I'm doing in that scene is um, breaking up elven furniture because we have no respect. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I'm breaking their furniture up. And which putting it actually, into firewood. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that was actually in the, um, uh, it was in the script that we were doing that, but nobody had set it up. So I said to the props, have you got something that I can break? Yes. that I can uh, snap and mm. put onto the fire. So that's the that's in that scene. It's very, very funny to see that uh, Boffer throws that thing, I think it's a sausage, and uh, Stephen catches it, yeah. Bomber catches it, and then Stephen Hunter collapses, the table falls, gales of laughter from everyone in the room, except Biffer. Well, that's except right. he's completely living his own narrative in his own head, that's right. which is kind of remarkable that you consistently do this over and over again through all the films, and that is the kind of fan appreciation we're seeing now. It is much funnier and much better when you guys re-watch the film and take a look at the details of, uh, of what Mr. Kircher is doing. Oh, look, a Skype call from Kelsey Eholt. Ooh, let's answer. Let's answer another we're Skype call. Kelsey. Hello, Kelsey. <coughs> we're Hello. trying. We're trying. Yes, it went through. Hello, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Oh my god, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Sorry, I'm so excited. This is amazing. Oh no, that's cool. Hello, welcome. Join the oh party. Oh my god, it's Biffer. It is. Yes, you're here talking to oh Biffer god, right I now. I say that I'm such a huge fan of you. I love Biffer. He's my favorite. Oh, thank you very much. It's, I hear that, you know, and it's not infrequent that people come up and say, Biffa is my favorite dwarf. And I say, <laughs> I bet you say that to all the dwarves. And they go, no, no, Biffa is my favorite. Like, so thank you very much. Like, of all the dwarves, much. he doesn't speak 
the common tongue. He speaks only Kazool and English, like That's right. And he's got a really cool pig sticker. Like He is, he is. How awkward is that to maneuver with oh, when it was you're so filming? Hard because we have very we have fat hands. Because we have uh, hands that are like gloves that you put on. Mm -hmm. And so once you actually start to you've got all the gear on and once you start to actually have to lift and run and hoist those weapons it's really really tough especially with the hands because it's hard to grip um but i loved i grew to love that weapon we were actually yeah. given the opportunity very early on to work with weta in suggesting um, ch um our own weaponry that we might carry and so i suggested a few i, I had to came up with a few ideas i said how about um uh, crossbows but made out of miners pickaxes and they loved that and they actually went away and did incredible artwork drawing up these weapons and then they presented them to peter jackson and some guys got their weapon you know the ones that they you know had ideas for but peter looked at me and he said no i want you to have that boar sphere and I oh, was, nice. you know, the thing is, I ended up being really happy because whenever you see the silhouette of us all, yes, you can see where Biffa is because he's got his That's fantastic boar speed. It yeah, is a delightful. The combo of the hair and the axe and the pig sticker definitely makes you a very distinguished. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the pig sticker. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, look! I tell you something the about the hair. Look, this is a good story. This is a good story about the hair. It's because um. When we did our very first, some of, some of you guys would have heard the story if you've been, because I've had told it at the conventions. But when we very first um, did our um, make it went in for our first makeup meeting, I had this be my beard like this. I had had it for years and years because my wife doesn't like it when I shave it off. She says I look like my mother. <laughs> but apart from that, <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, thank so you, thank I had you. this I had this coloring right. This salt so and pepper is very I nice. I went to see Peter. Peter King was the yeah, head. Yeah. Peter, yes. Peter King was the head um, makeup guy, and they put me straight in. I was, I thought it was just a meeting to have a bit of a chat. Sat me straight in the chair, shaved me, right? Shaved it all off, and I hadn't expected that. Then I got sent over to Weta, um, and I met with a group of about 10 designers, and they walked all around me, looking at me, looking at me, and they <laughs> took hundreds of photos, and we had to do head casts and all of that. And I came away from that realizing that they were actually going to mold some of our own characteristics were going to be, they were taking inspiration from our own looks to incorporate into the character. These are the designers. And I got home and I said to Nicole, now wait a minute, I, they'd shaved me, but I, my beard grows like this. So maybe I send a photo, I'll send a photo to them of how I look. And so I did that. I sent a photo and I said, please forward this to the designers. I want to see them to see how I kind of look just in case. Right. And then, lo and behold, months later, they hold up the picture of my character that I've already mentioned, and they'd incorporated that whole black and white salt and pepper thing into, it's the, so into great. the look. I was so proud and honoured that that, I, that that had gone right through <laughs> into the thing. It was incredible. It's and great. I, I, we were at a party, weren't we, darling? And a desi the desi guy walked up to me and he yeah. said, I'm the guy... Um, you don't know me, but I'm the guy that actually did your black and white beard and then put that into the character. <laughs> That's so amazing. cool. I love that black and white design. Choice. The braiding, the braiding is awesome. He's rock and roll dwarf, Biffy. He's Think rock and roll dwarf. He's totally much more than people would at first suspect. That's what they called me on the set. On the um, <laughs> on the set. Well, yeah, and myself roll. and my friends were trying to. Um, we want to go as a, a bunch of the Hobbit characters to Comic Con in San Diego. And we're trying to figure out how to braid your beard correctly, and we're having some difficulties getting it right. Oh, it's not easy, but there have been some fantastic cosplays of Biffa around the world. Visit Biffa Smoky yeah. Mountains on Facebook. Biffa Smoky Mountains on Facebook. She oh, really yes. I like, I like yes, Biffa Smoky I've Mountains. I've got one here. I've got one here. Yeah, I'll she's get, great. I'll show you. Um, this is great. Keep talking, though. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go on to the next caller and the next question, but thank you very much for coming right. in. And being in the show. Uh, yeah, I just want to say it was awesome meeting you. I, if you go to Comic Con, I can't wait to meet you because oh, I'm traveling do. there. Please, in I'd, I'd love to go. I really would. It yeah. just kind of depends. If on... you see someone dressed as Smaug, it's me, and I'm probably going to hug you a lot. So oh, don't be go, too <laughs> go right great. ahead. Wonderful. <laughs> Take that care. Wonderful. All right. Thank I love you. you. I can't wait to see you soon. Very okay, bye. See ya. Well done. Thank you, sweetheart. Excellent. We got, we got a couple of questions. Twitter, but, uh, we do have questions, but, but more importantly, we have our first fan who has joined our show from Pakistan. I'm thrilled. Wow. Sarah? Hello, hey, Sarah, Sarah. Hasmi. I'm, you know, 
the, the, the fans are chatting and saying there might be more fans in Pakistan than you think. And uh, uh, Sarah says that she's probably the only fan. <laughs> I know that there are Tolkien fans in Pakistan. It's really, really lovely to have so many international when fans join us. When they show the film in us. Pakistan, do they show it in Pakistani? Good question. <laughs> yeah, can you answer that, Sarah? Do they translate the film or just show it in English? Um, with subtitles, perhaps? But another question came in via text, uh, and, and they were asking, William, after seeing Desolation of Smaug, do you find some scenes that you had filmed seem completely different from the way you remember filming them? Yeah, absolutely. That happens absolutely. a lot. Absolutely, it does. It does, especially in the second film, because mm. it is incredible. And there's scenes that we, you, you, your part of it on the day is, is, is a little part of this amazing jigsaw puzzle. And you're really like, for example, the barrels. We're really in the barrels, really floating down a real river. Yes. Really on the day. Yes. But when you see that sequence put together, oh, wow. all that little tiny bit of jigsaw puzzle that you're in, and then you see the big jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. that Peter has put together. <laughs> it is astounding, and you realize that that little tiny bit has now become this huge, huge thing. It's a great it's set a, piece. A fair, it's magical experience. It's to, really to fun. That was probably one of my favorite things. Question from Twitter. You were at RingCon. What's your favorite convention so far uh, around the world? Oh, I have to say. Mm. I just, um, <gasps> No, that's yours. <laughs> they're all as, to be quite honest, they're all astoundingly good. All conventions have their own heart. And yeah. that's what I absolutely love about the convention. I love the fact that people get a chance to enjoy some fantasy and theatre in their lives by getting dressed mm. up. Absolutely love that. Because as an actor, you get to do it for when you're in work. You get to do it as a profession. And for people to have the chance to do it in their lives is a lot of fun. Um, Rincon was amazing because it's just like one big party, um, oh. and it's it's the it, the energy of it is centralised. But the, so same with Dragon Con. Dragon Con's a bit more spread out, but once again, it's got an incredible energy. Um, it's a hard question to answer because they're all good. They all have their own, you know, their own personality. Thank you, personality. One one fan has sent a text saying, "Hi, Bill. Can I call you Biff Biff?" You can call me William. Nicole has William. a new thing now. Not Bill, William. I, not, just yes, yes, yes. It's not Bill, William, and you can call me Biff Biff. Biff Biff, you're new now. I actually like bring back Biff. I like Biff. How about just Biff? Hey, Biff. Biff. Yeah. Hey, Biff, yeah. Hey, I'm go the Biff. B-I-F-F. -F. That was a popular name in the 40s and 50s, wasn't it? In America, at least. Well, Biff. Biff. Hey, yeah. Biff. Hey, Biff. Yeah, for sure. That's very funny. Biff. Biffy. Biffy the vampire. <laughs> ah. Biffer. Yeah. That's hysterical. And another uh, chat question was, what would happen if Biffer actually removed the axe out of his head? Another chatter went further and said, it would be great in the third film if you took the axe out of your head and killed some orcs with it. Have to wait and see. Have to wait and see. <laughs> Have to wait and see. <laughs> No, I can just imagine, like, the, the fact that you have to live with this injury means that, that there's a reason why you have not taken it out for years and years and years. Well, I so. can't take it out. I mean, he can't take it out himself. He can't. No, he can't. It's become part of him. And the people that have, because there was mm -hmm. an internet petition right when we started to get the axe out of Biffa's head. Really? And there was, yeah, there was controversy about the whole thing. There was really? An internet um, petition to, to Peter Jackson mm -hmm. to take the axe out of Biffa's head. But that, look, the thing is, this is a medieval, well, you know, it c could be described as a medieval fantasy, but it's a fantasy mm -hmm. film, and the books are a fantasy. And in those times, in the times where we were, people would get injuries like that on the battlefield, and they couldn't do anything about it. They either kill the person, or they have to leave it there. I mean, that really happened, and it even happens now. You know, if yes. you just go internet and Google it, you'll see that people live with bloody knives through their head and all mm -hmm. kinds of screwdrivers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yes. all kinds of things. Yeah. And um, in fact, when we were filming, um, a news story came out about a boy that uh, I think it was it was either a, I think it was a screwdriver I think stuck in his right in his head, and Peter Jackson bought the newspaper to to <laughs> work, oh, really? to show you and it. to show me and <laughs> say, look, <laughs> it <laughs> really. It really happens and showed everybody it really does happen so um that's where that comes from that's very funny i'm 10 minutes okay well we have 10 minutes this is a lovely short edition but 
Uh, not because we have a dwarf with us today, but we're having a more compact version of our show. We're going to do 60 minutes instead of 90 minutes today. Oh, okay. Um, okay. All these fans from around the world are just going crazy. Uh, a fan named Thori Ness sends greetings from Germany. William, it was yes, lovely. Yes, I know, Thori Ness, you look great, and I loved your outfit. Lovely to meet you, Thori Ness, because she, she was dressed as Thorin, and she looked amazing. Oh, a Thori yeah, Ness. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, great beard. There's... Um, I love a woman with a beard. Oh my, yeah. What uh, what's all that about? All the dwarven cosplays, they're all pretty much women. I know. I know. Even a yeah. Dragon Con like well, that. Well, yeah. it's what I say is like, um, I, I guess it, I don't know necessarily why it's women, but I do like the fact that people like to create some theater and fantasy in their lives. Yes. And, you yes, know, indeed. and if that is a woman dressing as a man, well, that's fantastic. And, that's happened all around the world as, as characters, uh, people dressing as Biffa and some of the other dwarves that are women. You're right. Do, and do, do you feel that Peter Jackson and Fran and Philippa have added more kind of femininity into what was a, a, a guy's tale? I think that they have. I mean, it's because they wanted the story, they want the story to appeal to a lot of different people. And in some way, that is why a character like Toriel has been introduced with Evangeline Lilly, because it, it, does, it does spread... You know, it's, it spreads the story. It opens the story to a wider audience. We have good question, Dustin. Well done, mate. Yeah, good, good question, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Justin. We're talking about cosplay, and I have noticed that most of the male cosplayers are doing elves and Legolas. They do, and, yeah, or Gandalf. Yes, or yeah, Gandalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the female characters are driven to do gender switch and do male dwarves. I think what is it, one of the other things that is in, amazing is the fan art that have, has taken off. Like, the love for the dwarves is incredible around mm -hmm. the world. And the fan art and the fan fiction for the dwarves is just amazing how it is, has inspired people to, to uh, for the, to, their, it, to, it's inspired their own creativity. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. I, and yeah. by the way, I had yeah, quite a late night last night because it was a Hobbit premiere and we did go to the party afterwards. And so yes, I got you to did. Bed at about 4.30. Um, Can I just wow. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's quite. 13 dwarves. Everyone is unique. So there are so right. many people out there that like to cosplay and they can connect to an individual dwarf. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wardrobe people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work in costume That's right. anyway. Yeah, they do. But the fan art thing is really funny. Like, there's little ponies and there's little kittens and there's like. Mm -hmm. um, there's even uh, some of them are just filthy yes. and disgusting. Yeah, that happens. I found sometime. a really, really dirty, <laughs> dirty one of Dwalin and Balin, and oh. so I immediately forwarded it to, to Graham McTavish. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Really? Yeah, and I got this email back saying, oh my God. God, that's <laughs> and funny. He could never look himself in the face again. You know, um, <laughs> there's um, there's the shot in the first film with uh, uh, Graham McTavish grabbing the cookies out of the cookie jar, and then it suddenly became an internet meme that Dwalin loves cookies, and there were pictures, there were little Japanese anime characters yeah, that yeah, people yeah. drew of. Graham McTaffish <laughs> stuffing cookies like crazy. It, it became a meme. He should start you know? his own cookie line. He could. <laughs> he could. Dwalin's cookies. And what is it with with uh, Boffer has his hand. Oh, I should have bought mine. I got these too. I've got one of these. Um, you I've do. Got a, um, I've got. Um, he's great. A, I've got a Biffa. I've got a fantastic puppet. Thank you, Liz. Hi, Liz. If you're out there, oh, I've got a hand cute. puppet and I've got a plushie. Uh, two amazing plushies. Like. Prof like they made the like a toy store has made them, but uh -huh. they're not. They're made by fans, and they just just like this them. one. This one was made yes, by except a fan. that's Buffer. That's Buffer, but he's got his ham all the time. It's Dwalin and his cookies, Buffer and his ham. I would have bought them if I no no this was going to be. I would have bought mine along. Uh, yes, he should. He should be holding... Or that... Was it a silver radish, you said it was? No, no, silver beet. A silver beet. Do you have silver beet here? No, I've never heard of it. Oh, really? Well, Until today. Uh, yeah, it's a... You know, it's like a kind of spinach. Mm, yum. Like kale, sort of, maybe? No, that's like even... It's, it's, uh, really? I love kale. It's not like kale. <laughs> Question from Twitter. Uh, what were the advantages of playing a character who communicates via Iglomesh? Via what? Iglomesh? Kuzdul? Iglish Mech? Iglish Yes. Oh, I don't know what that means. Oh, that's from Twitter. He's getting his question. Oh, from okay, so it's not on there. What no. What are the advantages of playing a character who only communicates via... Uh, An ancient dwarven well, language. Well, the advantages are that it is, is completely different. 
It mm -hmm. is, um, once again, it harks back to Biffa and his injury and to being something... He is special. He's a he's a bit special mm -hmm. in the real sense of the word, <laughs> and so that is what is great about it. He's kind of like South Park's Kenny. Like you don't understand what he's saying or thinking, but he's there and he's integral. He actually, in the as the as the stories go on, um, Biffa does actually start finding more of a sense of direction. So he starts out on the stories quite zoned out, not knowing where he is. But mm -hmm. it's the, like like the journey starts to make him come a bit more right. Mm. In his as things go on, and, and he becomes a more of a positive character. That's the that's my sort of character arc for Biffa. As the thing goes on, he actually becomes a bit more lucid, and a bit more together. Like he finds a direction in his life great. that he didn't have before. Oh, that's great. Mm. Well, there is so much to talk about that we can't about the recent screenings of the Desolation of Smaug, but overall, the party and the event last night, you had a good time. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was lovely actually, and it was good fun to catch up with some old friends. Um, there weren't a lot of dwarves there. Uh, Aidan and Dean were there. The hot dwarves <laughs> were there. Do you know who we started so that? Fondly, we so fondly they described them as the hot dwarves. The hot dwarves. dwarves. I'm afraid that started on our website. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah, started, yeah, on our message yeah. boards. Well, we're all hot. And yes. the other thing I want to say S is that <laughs> cause people, ask, people ask about... Um, how come they look a little bit different, um, you know, the hot dwarves, uh, <laughs> Philly and Kelly? Without and the come, bulbous nose, yeah, yeah, without but, the prosthetics. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and it's be, my theory is this, that dwarves get to being about, you know, uh, in human years about 40, in dwarven years probably about 150, mm -hmm. and they suddenly just go... <laughs> 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 Before that, up until up until forty, they're actually quite sexy. <laughs> oh, up until forty, and then it all goes to hell. <laughs> it all goes to hell. <laughs> That's hysterical. I know. So there you go. That's my. I'm it's I'm, true. It's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Um, working with working with some of these fine folks that you're working with, with Ken Stott, with yeah. Adam Brown, yeah. with a very funny Mark Hadlow who I adored meeting and talking with on set. Yeah. Some of your favorite personalities and some of your favorite quick memories um, uh, from working oh with those God, boys? Oh, just so many. Did There's you get... Just so many. Who was a practical joker, if there was one? Uh, I, Aiden played a, f a joke on me. We didn't, <laughs> you don't actually do a lot of practical joking because to be because you are there to do the work. And yes. so all the time yes. you're having fun and joking around all the time, but there's not a lot of practical joking because... Mm -hmm. Time is money. It's a very, very big film. It's hundreds of millions of dollars, and there's a hundred people standing around wanting you to get it right, you know, and you especially want to get it right for the director. Yeah, no pressure. But I was one Aiden did one to on me. Aiden. We haven't brought that out yet. Oh, Aiden one. Oh, you tell. Um, but the one I'm going to tell, and she might have a different one. We haven't. You haven't seen the scene yet because um, it's going to be in the third film. But it's a scene where we're preparing to go out for battle, and we're grabbing weapons, and we had to work out. Um, uh, where, you know, I'd specially place some weapons so in the scene I could run around gathering things up and be ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Peter Jackson says, action. I go to the place where I've carefully placed my, uh, you know, a knife, a spear to get ready to go out in the battle. Bloody Aiden has taken them and hidden them. No so you way. Run to the <laughs> shot and you go, oh. <laughs> Quick, find something else <laughs> to carry out a shot. Funny. So that was really funny. He did that over and over again. Uh, he was did? that the one you met, Nicole? No, mine was slightly a bit more private after after hours and um, oh. everyone enjoying the spa. And oh, we can't now, say that about the spa. You now have an intimate item of clothing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I so, do. That's right, I do too. Unwashed. I do. Unwashed? Are you kidding? I'm know. afraid that this... And I am going to raffle that intimate <laughs> item of clothing one day <laughs> for <laughs> charity. You should. And for charity. Oh my gosh. About it. I keep saying, I've got this, I've got this thing oh, that man. you left, you know, on the fence when we got in the spa in Awakuni. It, he keeps forgetting about it, though. You you have a secret well, article. Let's not say anything else. I'm afraid that the salacious details will have to wait for later. Uh, look, it did on not another involve, day. There was nothing rude. There was, it was just so lads funny. having a spa, all <laughs> one, as you do, all one last, folks together. One last question. We've manly, got, in a manly kind of way. Another good question. Somebody has asked dwarves, several... Dwarves in the spa, that's what it was. I, I have to see this. Like in the fountain, like you guys taking that bath oh. in the fountain. Um, someone wants you to try Smaug's I voice. Can't. I can't do Smaug's voice. No, I that's... Can't. Sorry. No, only because Benedict Cumberpatch 
is the master and also the way that he plays Smaug. And it's mm -hmm. revealing, it would be revealing the new film. And he's just so good at it that you can't, I wouldn't even venture. Sorry. Really? Yeah. Well, then, w well, wait, well, well you, you, said, you, were there, you said you've heard Smaug's voice. I have sm heard Smaug's voice. I have, you can't actually do it. I have, and I've seen the writing on the wall as well. This film is going to eye, open some eyes and raise some eyebrows and get lots of fans excited. It is. Indeed, it will. It is. But, uh, like Peter Jackson, our uh, chat person here says that I'm a bit of an arachnophobe, so I'm terrified of the spider sequence. How was it? Do be terrified. Uh, don't go and see the film yeah. for a start, because the spider sequence is outrageous. What was it like to film that? Oh, it was very funny. It was really, really funny, because they really put... Uh, what, look, Peter... <laughs> Peter loves putting us in very uncomfortable, difficult situations. Yeah, turning you on a spit. Happen, turning us on the spit. I know. And each time that we would have to do, we did another one where we fall down in, in that um, in the goblin cave in that um, on the bridge thing, and we all get crushed together. Mm -hmm. Well, we really got in amongst all that rubble, and there were things on top of us, and it was a really uncomfortable and upside down and sideways in the barrels. And Peter would come in with his little phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and get a, get a shot of us in an, our incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> positions. And one of those was a spider covered in this um, silicon spider web and wow. the stuff they spray on you. They yeah. sprayed and sprayed until we were completely covered. And Peter would come in and video. And we'd say, <laughs> always look on the bright side of life. Oh, <laughs> great. We started I love it. that as a group. <laughs> because it was just so That's outrageous. so funny. A so, Monty Python joke. And also, so with that, um, with the spider stuff, we had to lay there for ages completely. You, you can't be claustrophobic hmm. because you were completely shrouded with that, with spider web. Immobilized. Well, just lying there, waiting, 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 waiting for the word to say action, where we had to break out of it, ah. and then go. And ah. then they'd do it again and again and again, they'd completely cover us again. Oh, really? Gosh. Yeah. That's a lot. We're going to see more of very, that. Very, very hot. We're going to see more of that in the behind they the scenes. Wrap us around and the stuff, because they're in sheets. They're in sheets. All of the silicon webbing is on sheets, and so they would stretch it. and. Turn like a big, big bandage. Go round and round mm -hmm. and round and round and round and round like and round. Mummy wrappings, you. like mummy wrappings. And yeah. Then, and then this, uh, they had a spray. Um, it's a fan, actually. It's incredible. That's um, interesting. I'd love people to see it because it's it's like an electric fan, but it shoots out a um, a thin. It's it's like Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it shoots out this thing that turns into a web. And the, the, the fan spins it out, so it goes flip, 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 and turns it, and, and turns it into a web. It's incredible. That is so cool. Yeah. That's very cool. I'm excited to talk with you more, but we have to, unfortunately, Aww. bring our... I just got going! You are very good. You're going very, very well indeed. But um, uh, uh, of all these comments... Um, yep. One last question. I study film, and I'm trying to learn how to direct in film. What's it like to be directed... By Sir Peter Jackson. Very, it's, um, he's a very, very good director mm. with actors. He, ha he really respects actors. He respects their work. You are allowed to, when you direct a film, it's good to, you know, if you tr to have the trust and confidence in yourself to let your actors make suggestions, which you can with Peter Jackson. I mean, you have to time it right. You mm -hmm. don't just, you know, shout out from the back, what if I do this? But if the time is right and, and you're in a scene, you can say, hey, hey, Peter, what if I try this? And if it's good and he thinks it's going to add to the... And this happens several times with me. Um, if he thinks it's going to add to the quality of his film, he will take those suggestions on board and let you try stuff. And it's just... that's As an actor, that is great to work with somebody like that. But ultimately, he is a creative visionary and he has a very clear picture of what he wants in his film or in, his, in the scene. A very clear picture. And that is also comforting as an actor because you're working with somebody that has the confidence to know what they want. Yeah, yeah. Because the worst thing when you're an actor is to have a director that stands shaking their head, not knowing what the hell to do with themselves. You know. Okay. And no, he is uh, he is a brilliant director. There's a reason that he is one of the greatest directors in the world. That is excellent. He is amazing. I'm glad to hear that. Very I just checked my email since we're all friends together. Since we're all I'm here, I'm just going to say uh, um, we are very glad to have you here, William Kircher. Very glad, my pleasure to see you, sir. Thank and you very much for having me. It's so <laughs> fun. And Billy Boyd was right. 
<laughs> I haven't spoken to Adam about it, but you know, it's so great to see you guys. So thank you for having me. It's very fun. One last request. Yep. They would like to hear you say Grand. Do you remember Grand? Nope. The giant battering ram in the Return of the King oh, that smashes down the gates. Grand. That's it. Grand. One more time. Grand. You got it, ladies. Take That's care. for you. See ya. Thank you and good night. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. See ya. Bye. Thank you, William. You're the best, man. You're the best. <laughs> well done. Well done. Bye, guys. Thank hey, you. Thank you.